All right, in today's video, we're gonna be going over how to control volumetrics, and how to control the saturation of your scene with light passes. And then before we get started, I would like to give full credit to Outrun Youth for the inspiration for this project. I've been going through and recreating a handful of his creations here. He does a lot of cool stuff, so you should go check him out. I'll have him linked in the description. Alrighty, so now we're gonna go over the scene layout and just kind of take a look at what I'm doing here. Um, this is what my render looks like at the moment. I still have a little more work I wanna do on it, but this is getting pretty close to the final look. All right, then for all of the grass and for all the scattered objects here and for the trees, I'm using the free biome reader add-on and I'm using uh, some of the bushes here for my trees. So then I separate out just the base of the trees so I can have a, a, what appears to be a more dense forest without actually adding in any more geometry for the leaves um, and to kind of replicate the look of the original. Um, then my character here is made in MB Lab and um, the hat, these little boots, the cloth, all that is made and simulated um, in Blender just really quickly, you know, just using a subdivision modifier to make the hat. Everything else is just made really quickly. I found a really good video explaining how to do simulations really well. It does a really good job of explaining how to get your simulations to work really well. I'll link that in the description as well. The reason this leg is clipping through here is because I moved the legs after I baked the simulation. And another thing is if you're gonna be rendering out an animation with your simulation, uh, I really recommend exporting this out of Blender and then bringing it back in. And I'll link a video on how to do that in the description as well. You'll run into the issue a lot if you pause your render and then resume it. You can actually delete the cloth cache for some reason, and then you'll have to re-simulate everything and start rendering all over again. So I recommend um, baking this by exporting it out of Blender and then bringing it back in, and it, then it'll be applied as a shape key to the cloth. Um, then I just have some sparks, which have their own effector collection, and then that is about it for the scene. Uh, this, the ground is just a big plane that I subdivided and use proportional editing to shape. A um, couple of spotlights. Um, that's really it for the scene layout. So next we're gonna be looking at how to control your volumetrics to give them a different look. So you can use box shapes like this uh, and then control the density in certain areas so you can have a little bit of fall off uh, so you don't see the sharp edges of where the fog starts and ends. So you look at the rendered view here, you can see both that there is some noise in the fog so that it isn't um, equally dense everywhere and that you can't um, see the edges of the box because there's a fall off and you can see here uh, what I'm talking about we're using a noise texture with the color ramp to control um, to have some varied density and then we're using a gradient texture and a color ramp to control where the fog is in the cube so if we look here on the noise texture, you can see that this is the noise pattern that controls the density, and then we're using a color ramp um, to change the density of the fog. When we plug that in to the density, and you'll get how dense the fog should be in relation to this noise texture. Then if we look over here, we have a gradient texture. And you can see that we have a fall off, so that there's only fog here in the lower portion, and then the fog slowly disappears as it goes up. Then we mix those together using this color ramp as the factor. We get fog that falls off towards the edges. So next we're gonna be looking at how we can go from this saturated image to this, where only the scene lights are desaturated, but these two red lights are not. We do this using light groups. So if we look here at my light group, you see that this light group has only the world lights this next one has only the spotlights on the trees, and this one has just the red lights. Then I run them through a denoiser, which I have here in a little group. We run each one of them, we run the image into each one, and the normal and albedo into each one of them as well. Three different denoise nodes, and then those are passed out. Then we take the light group with the world lights, and we desaturate it. And then when we mix that over the other images, we get a scene where the red is still very strong and vivid, but the rest of the lighting is uh, flat and desaturated, which brings extra attention to the red lights here. Now, of course, we can do anything else with this, change the darkness and the brightness, which makes light groups a very powerful tool for compositing. Alrighty, so if you have any questions about anything in this scene, feel free to ask them in the comments. I try to keep up with those as much as possible. 
and I'll be posting all these renders on Instagram once they're done, and I also am going to be using these to make a little short film, which I'll be releasing here in the next few months, hopefully. You have a good day, and we'll see you next time.